Hello, this is Michael Trayvon's RV Center here to congratulate you on the purchase of your 2023 Intech Soul Dawn Rover Edition. I'm here to walk you around it, show you how to use a few things to get the best out of your camping experience. Let's start by talking about arriving at the campsite, a few things to take into consideration when you're parking. On your campsite, I should think about leaving room for that awning, with that big Thule awning up there. And on your off campsite, I just want you to think about where your power and water connections are going to be. Your power is going to be right behind your tire, and your water is going to be right in front of your tire, both just above it on your off camp side or your driver's side of your tow vehicle. So park accordingly so you can utilize the facilities at the campsite. Once we arrive, unhook our hitch. First thing we do is level our unit. The unit does come with a power tongue jack. Night docking light should you arrive at night. Simply retract to lower extend the raise now should you lose power underneath this rubber stopper here is a bolt that your hand crank for your stabilizing jacks will work on speaking of them once our unit's level next thing we're going to do is stabilize it so use this handle to get that up and down should you lose power you can also use it for your stabilizing jacks for a start i'm going to recommend stabilizing jack pads these pads are going to protect the feet of your stabilizing jacks uh, from dirt, debris, hot black top in the summer. It's going to better distribute the weight. You're going to run these down just until they're taut. Remember, our unit's already level. All we're doing now is stabilizing it. You don't want to use these to try to level your unit. So once you've got a little resistance on your hand crank, you know you're taut. That's going to stay nice and tight in there for you. Get all four of them down. you got one on the other side under the front. And then on the rear... You can get to them from there so get all four of those down got a unit level and stable we can hook up our power and water your power cord plugs in just above your tires here get this pistol grip on them grab them put them in pointing to say about 11 o'clock turn it to noon put that black washer on there uh 30 foot 30 amp cord now should you lose power or not should you lose power should you need to plug into a 110 uh, in your convenience pack will be a 30 amp to 15 amp reducer you can throw on the end of that now you got your power hooked up and check up our water put docking station in here to the left of our heater flue on the right is going to be our city water over here is going to be our fresh water at campsites we're hooking up the city water connection first and foremost your water pressure regulator this water pressure regulator is going to reduce the water pressure to 40 to 50 psi, protecting the lines in your unit. You don't know what the water pressure is at different campsites, so always use these. Hook that up. Hook up your hose. Don't turn your hose on yet. One more step. Right there is your hot water heater. All we're doing at this point, folks, making sure our drain plug's back on in here. So, and in rod. Get that in there nice and snug. Uh, use plumber's tape on that. Not putty, putty will gum up on you. Get some plumber's tape on that. Inch and an eighth socket, get that in there nice and tight. Once that's sitting there tight, then you can go ahead and turn that hose on. Now, after the hose has been on for a couple minutes, once you go inside and open up your water taps, get all the air out of the lines, get a nice steady flow of water going through them, shut them off, and then come outside, lift up on this pressure release valve. If you get some water coming out of there, you'll know that your hot water heater is full then you can turn that on from indoors. If for some reason your hot water heater doesn't seem to be working, so I hear where it says press to reset. See if either one of them are bubbled up. You just simply press them back in. More instructions on your suburban water heater down there. I gave you the basics. That should cover everything you need on that. Uh, once we uh, got our water hooked up, you're all set. Let's say we're going to go camping and we're not going to use city water. We're going to go boondocking. In that case, we're going to fill up our potable water or fresh water tank. No need for a water pressure regulator here. You can simply gravity fill this with a hose. Two ways to tell when it's full. One, there's an overflow valve right here. Or two on the inside where you check the levels of your black and gray tanks. There's also a fresh water button. Keep an eye on that when you're filling it. Don't leave this unattended while filling that either. Don't just think it's going to overflow and you'll be fine. But uh, Go ahead and once it's full remove your hose put that cap back on and then whenever you want to utilize that water you'll turn on your water pump 
Don't turn on your water pump and using city water that's already pressurized. You can close this, swing this over here, close that up and run your hose out through there. Keeps that a little protected better. All right, we're all set up camp. Got your power and water. I'm gonna go ahead and walk you around the rest of the unit. Starting on the outside here. This is a vent for your batteries, which are located under your seat inside. I'll show you those when we go inside. Again, your hot water heater. Uh, docking station, fresh water and city water again. A flue for your furnace. Two things on that. One, make sure it's never blocked. And two, if you're running your furnace, steer clear of that. That does get hot. Access panels to the back of your fridge for technicians. Down here, you can store your stinky slinky or your sewage hose. Nice sanitary place to do that. Over here, you can plug in a solar panel. That'll trickle charge your batteries. Down here, you plug in the cable at the campsites. And again, your power. There's where you dump your black tank there. The gray tank. Got a quick connect hose out here. The hose actually stores over top of that. So try to keep that curve in that. So note on that, uh, accessory hitch. Looks like you get 175 pounds, so probably about a bike rack. Got our awning over on this side. I'll run that out in a minute. Our porch light, a couple of 110s over here. In case you need to put the crock pot outside. Big storage with a magnet to hold that up. Inside there is your handle crank for your awning. A cover for your front window for travel. And stakes for your awning. Your awning legs. These, your awning arms can go into if you're using it in that way. Then you lock that down. I'll show you where we put that out. Again, up front, you can snap your windshield cover on and here we have our batteries or our, excuse me our propane tanks little cotter pins there hold them on inside here uh your regulator propane lefty loosey to open when it's green you've got gas you can open them both set this in the middle and it'll automatically cross over when one's empty that about covers everything out here. Let's go take a look on the inside. So coming in your entry door, I want to first point out immediately to your right is going to be your fire extinguisher. Make sure that you and everyone that's camping with you knows where the fire extinguisher is in case of an emergency. Before stepping in, I'll look right here to the left. I've already done it, but this way you can turn on all your lights. Port that porch light, accent, dinette, cabinet, kitchen, and main lights. Turn them on and step inside. I'll tell you one thing about trailers and slam locks. They work best when gently slammed. Here in the kitchen, I'll start up top. Sound system. Dual speakers, AM, FM, Bluetooth, DVD, USB. Speaker back here. Or the speakers up there. Turn them both off. Down below here, 110 with GFCI reset. A cooktop here. So when you first turn on these gases, you may have to bleed it a little bit before you get these to turn on. There we go. Over here on light, and there we go. So you may have to give it a few to get the gas into the lines from first turning it on. This, if it doesn't want to fall forward for you, you got to lift it up a little. Nice big sink. Down here to the left is our control panel. Here's where you turn on your water pump. If you're using potable water, your tank heater, that'll turn on a little 12-volt pad that's on your tanks if you're in inclement weather and you think they might freeze. Your water heater, if hooked up to gas, your water heater if hooked up to electricity. There's where you turn these on. Choose appropriately. Up here is where you check the level of your battery. Your black, gray, and freshwater tanks have freshwater ones. You watch to see when that gets full for your potable water. Under your sink, some plumbing to maintain. It's almost all PEX nowadays in these units. 
PEX lines and PVC, easy to maintain. Watch for drains, you're bouncing a house down the road, you don't want any leaks, etc. Coming into our shower bathroom, you've got a hand crank open exhaust vent here. Nice protect the car for your TP. Lighting here. Microwave. Fridge. Automatic fridge. Flip this up here. We'll turn that on. And we're going to... Let it crank on here. We're going to put this on auto. There's gas. There's DC. And auto. Auto means when you're plugged in, you're running off electricity. As soon as I unplug that, that'll switch over here to gas. You can also go 12 volt on this as well. But auto is best to run it on. Like I said, when you're plugged in, it'll run off of your electricity. As soon as you unplug it, it'll go to gas. That light comes on when you're running off gas. Check your gas. It'll be low. It's an indicator for that. And this will be 1 through 5 being the coldest. Lift up on this and open in the fridge. Down below your fridge, uh, heat register and your breaker box and fuses. Handful of 15s and a 40 in there. Highly recommend having some of those with you when you go camping. Down below that, your 12 volt carbon monoxide propane detector. Now, the reason I mentioned that's 12 volts, always running off your battery. So if you are out dry camping, boondocking somewhere, nothing plugged in charging your battery, nothing trickle charging it. If you're going to be gone for the day, use your battery disconnect. Which is right around the corner here. So this will shut off all the battery power to the unit. Next to that, 110s. Uh, 12 volt USB chargers. Emergency exit windows. If you're sitting over here, you can turn on your lights from over here as well. Got a nice big shade for our front window. Uh, smoke alarm, don't forget to change your um, batteries and nose on a regular basis. Your AC unit, let me get your thermostat here in a minute. Um, over here, you do have another hand crank open. Vent. I don't know if button on this thing. Oh, it is max air vent. So we turn that on here. And it cranks it open. Shut it off. It will shut the fan off and close it. Different speeds for the fan. Next to that, our thermostat. Let's go ahead and crank up the AC. Put that down to 55. See if we can get that to come on. It's colder than 55 in here. That may be my problem. Let's go ahead and hook it up to the heat then. Turn the thermostat on. There that goes. So you'll notice when I shut the heat off that the heat um, tends to stay on for a few minutes before it cycles through and shuts off that fan. So you quickly get a couple different ways to set up your living room here. Uh, we're going to set it up for our bed. We have this big piece here that has these metal pieces. Swing them out to the sides. We're going to tuck this up underneath the front and the sides. Underneath there, on both sides. And that will give you your other sleeping quarters. Get this out of your way, of course. I'm going to go ahead and hook up the table. Flip this up and out of the way. And show you your table leg has this little post here that you're going to slide down into that slot. Once it's into the slot, start turning to the right. Get it in there first. Once it gets to a certain point, it is going to tighten up. 
to set your top on and it gives you a table. Now underneath the seating over here, let me open it up for you. Showing our peak underneath this seating panel over here, access panel, will be your batteries. Check those posts every now and then, make sure those haven't looked loose over time. Your hot water heater. Where to bypass your hot water heater. Set a bypass right now when winterizing. Here's where you will siphon in your antifreeze by turning on your water pump. Down here is where you will dump your drains. Over here is your freshwater tank, and that will be your freshwater drain. So when we leave the campsites when we're boondocking, we will open up that drain right there and drain out that freshwater tank. And at campsites, we will open up those to dump our low point drains. So that about covers everything in here. Exactly like we're leaving the campsite and close the unit up. So you just batten down the hatches, put away all controls. I like to say doors and drawers. Uh, here are a couple of drying racks and paperwork. Also, make sure that you go through this paperwork and register any appliances that you may deem need registered. Go through the unit, doors and drawers. Make sure all doors and drawers are closed. Nothing's gonna uh, get out of the way when we're traveling. I want to show you lastly on your TV here. Pull down on this handle, that'll pull this TV out. And I forgot I did not show you, so I'll show you your television here. Could these be the Insignia TVs? What you do is when you arrive at the campsite, go in here to your menu and run a digital channel scan for all of your local channels. It'll help you to pick them up for wherever your campsite is. Again, you see this will just push back here. Make sure this button is on red. That's your digital channel enhancer, and that'll help you pick up more channels like an antenna. It snaps back in there. All right, let's head on out. All right, I'm sure you how to bring out this tool yawning. You have a slot on the end of your uh, hand crank here. You know, put that into a slot up here and start cranking it out to the right. Runs out pretty quickly difficult to do once you see your arms are extended as far as they can I'm going to come up it's over here and I'm going to bring that to the side that's going to release this end and then you can bring this out yeah. get these out as far as we can here bring it up Set it right up in there and lock that down. Repeat the process here. Release the arm. Let this down. Bottom end in first. Push it back. And then you're locked in. And just say quickly you've got an awning. To repeat the process, lift that up, release your arm, hold everything up, and in here, once you tuck that in there, just push it forward. That's going to lock it in. Do the same on the other end and crank it closed. Alright, if we're out dry camping, again we're going to dump our fresh water from in there, bring up our stabilizing jacks and head on home. If we are at a campsite, we're gonna hook our power, our water, our cable, bring up our stabilizing jacks and head on up to the dump station. Now dump station, park accordingly. The dump's gonna be right behind your tires on your off campsite. You have a 10 foot hose coming to your convenience pack. Park accordingly, hook that up and pull this black handle. Now once this feels like it's no longer draining, once you go inside, check your black tank, make sure it's no longer draining. If it shows empty, 
Uh, I don't see a black tank flush on this, but I would recommend going ahead and just pouring some fresh water down your toilet inside, flush that down, you know, a gallon or two, and uh, take, wash that out real good for you before you take off. Once that show is completely drained, go ahead and close that black handle, take your sewage hose, and store it in your stinky slinky holder. Again, get inside there, lift this seat up, and dump your low point drains. Hook everything back up and head on home. Again, thank you guys so much for your purchase. Hope you enjoy this new Soul Rover for many years to come. Happy camping.